way. How is everyone doing? Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Lulu. Okay. Okay, my name is Dr. Lulu and I am a... Uh, hi, Tiffany. Wow, Tiffany, you're my first girl today. Thank you so much for hanging out. Um, my name is Dr. Lulu. I'm a Jessica Elba. What's going on? I'm a national keynote speaker on child, teen, and young adult depression and suicide. I help parents and caregivers really um, navigate the muddy waters of teen behavior so that they don't end up on the wrong side of suicide. So here today talking about part two, part two of bullying and suicide, our back to school series. So if you can hear me very well, please give me a thumbs up. I don't see, oh, there's Nikki Israel back there. Okay, I was going to say, I don't see anyone on my, on my regular page. I have been banned to my middleman child's room. So ha, ah, that's where I am today. <laughs> the, the oldest boy took his room back. So how is everybody doing? After last week, um, Asa Tolulu is on. Ellis, Asa Tolulu is on. I'm not sure if you can't see it, but it's on. Um, but everybody, thanks for asking though, but everyone was just talking about this bullying and suicide thing. It was like, oh my goodness, bullying and suicide. It is true. There is a major, major link between bullying and suicide. I'm not making it up. It's real. A lot of people have died because they were bullied, whether it's at work, or at school or at home, a lot of people that have died by suicide were bullied. So there is a bona fide relationship between bullying and suicide. Don't let anybody ever tell you differently because there is. Um, a lot of the kids that we're gonna talk about, when you look at their newsreel, when you look at the, the, the discussion on their cases, you will see that they were incessantly bullied. You know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the kids first today. Hi, Samantha. I'm going to talk about the kids first today because I was going to talk about them last, but I'm going to talk about them first. So if you're just watching me, I mean, if you're just joining me, we're talking about part two of bullying and suicide as part of our back to school series. Okay. So let me go over what we talked about last week real quick. So we talked about the fact that yes, there's a strong link between bullying and suicide. 58, so about 60% of children who die by suicide were actually bullied okay um let me see we're going to discuss 10 stories we talked about the fact that most adults think that bullying is a rite of passage through childhood but i'm here to tell you that it's not we define we define bullying we talked about the five or six different types of bullying who is a bully why do they bully who is the victim why are they victimized what is the bully looking for why is the bully bullying we talked about the fact that bullying goes on because there's bully, there's a bully, there's a victim, and there is a bystander. Okay? We discussed the bad outcomes. They can be emotional, they can be perpetrating the behavior, increased suicide, depression, anxiety, mental illness, death, domestic violence, all as you know, side effects of bullying. What can the school district do? What can the parents do? What can the friends do? What can the rest of the world do? What can the government do when it comes to helping with bullying? So today we're going to talk about 10 children who in the last few months and years have taken their own lives because they were bullied. Okay, the first one I'm going to talk about today is Miss Rochelle Pryor. She was my first I think the first one that I reported this year, she died on January 9th, I believe. She killed herself. Her last, she's a 14-year-old Australian girl. Her last Facebook post was, maybe after I'm gone, the bullying and the racism will stop. I remember that very well. And then there was a big news thing that in the, in the past 21 days, nine Australian girls, teenagers, had killed themselves between the ages of 14 and 17, I think. So that was this year. That was Miss Rochelle Pryor. Then we have Mr. Kevin Reese. Kevin Reese was only 10. He lived up the road from me over at Katy in um, Texas. He was bullied relentlessly, is what the news report said. And that particular day he had been bullied in the in the playground. He went to the to the school 
um, admin office to report the case and they didn't do anything about it. So when he got home, he went to his room and hung himself with his belt. That was Mr. Kevin Reese. Very, very, very sad. Miss Mackenzie Adams was the poor nine-year-old girl from Alabama who was bullied by other kids in the school because one, she was riding in the car with a white kid. So a white kid and, their, and his parents used to take her to school. And that was her crime. Hi, Justin, my cousin. That was her crime. She was nine years old. She had been bullied in a different school, if I remember correctly. And her mother had changed her school. And when they got to the new school, the bullying continued. Because like we said last week, one of the characteristics of the victim is a new kid, a kid who is different. And this kid's difference was she rides in the school bus. She, rides, um, she doesn't ride in the school bus because of the bullying. She rides in a car with a white kid to school. And kids actually typed in her iPad, why don't you just kill yourself? Why don't you go and die? You are this, you are that, and the other. Terrible, terrible stuff. Then we have Mr. Seven Bridges, 10-year-old male, whose only crime was he was different because he had a huge laundry list of medical problems. One of them was the fact that he had a colostomy bag. And if you don't know what a colostomy bag is, a colostomy bag is a conduit to allow you have bowel movements when you have intestinal obstruction or when there's some stuff going on with your intestines. So this poor little guy had to already endure the humiliation of having a colostomy bag. But then on top of everything, don't you know, um, one, I think on the way home one day from the school, somebody choked him. One of the kids that was put to watch over him actually choked him in the school bus. And when he got home, so that was seven bridges rest in peace seven then of course there's mr philip spruill philip spruill was 11 years old okay he was overweight he was obese and he had adhd so his crime was he was overweight something that is not rare in america but because he was overweight and he had adhd the news report said he was incessantly bullied like they bullied him all the time his seven-year-old brother was also being bullied and little um, Philip got home that day because he used to try to kind of fight and you know prevent his brother from getting bullied and the report was that he had been in three fights in school. Nobody talks about the other kids that he was fighting with, but he had been in three fights in school because he was fighting to prevent people from bullying his brother while he himself was also being bullied. And then that day he went home and he hung himself. Repeatedly being bullied for being overweight and having ADHD. Can somebody please tell me why in America, where everybody else is overweight, a kid should be picked on because of their weight. But that's what happened with Mr. Philip. Then, of course, Nigel Shelby. His news was really kind of sensational because he killed himself about a week or so after another girl. I can't think of her name right now, but I'll think of it in a minute who was a survivor of the Parkland High School shooting in, in Florida. But Mr. Nigel Shelby was 15 years old and gay, right? And his family said he was the energy of the party. His smile would light up a room. He was just a good, all around good kid. But because he was gay, he was bullied. If you guys remember last week, we talked about the fact that LGBTQIAP children are almost number one now of the people who are being bullied almost every single day. LGBTQ youth are almost the kids who are being bullied the most. And they have the highest rate of suicide now amongst all children. Of course, we know that suicide is number two cause of death, second only to accidents. But suicide in LGBTQ youth is number one in all the children put together. So this little Nigel, 15-year-old, beautiful, handsome boy, I just want to hug him in his pictures, he killed himself because he was bullied. And then I have a different kind of girl this time around. I have Amal al Shatewi. She was Canadian. She's my first Canadian that I know of. I'm sure there are others. And if you're just joining me, we're talking about part two of bullying and suicide as part of our back to school series. 
We're talking about Miss Amal Ashtaiwei, who was Canadian. She was only nine years old. A crime was she had a hijab on. Like I said last week, if you're different, they're going to bully you. And just because your bullying did not lead to you killing yourself does not mean that somebody else's bullying cannot. So the onus is on you and I to raise better children, children who are not going to be bullying other kids because they have a hijab on. So she was Muslim and she killed herself. Canadian girl. One of the things they wrote in her own news clip was also that she had endured incessant bullying. And the thing about this bullying is a lot of times in school, almost all the time, there is a bystander. There are kids out there watching while this bullying is going on. It hardly ever occurs in isolation. And these kids are there and they don't do anything. Such a sad, sad, sad thing. Number nine is Aaron Fuller. He was 13 years old. Caucasian male also being bullied. And I, right now I can't remember if Aaron was the kid whose father got a billboard put in their city that says, your child killed my son or something like that because he was just bullied just nonstop. I want to say number 10 is an unknown child. I didn't put a name there because number 10 could be your child that's next. So I'm gonna say that again. Number 10 could be your child. So you do me a favor, if you're watching me right now, please, if you don't mind, insert your child's name. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna insert my son's name in my Ask Dr. Lulu page because number 10 child who died by bullying, I'm gonna put, I mean, because of bullying, I'm gonna put your child, I'm gonna ask you to please write your child's name. I'm gonna put my third son on um, my Ask Dr. Lulu page. I'm gonna put my first son on my Teen Alive page. We call him Papa. I want you to do me a favor and write your child's name, pick anyone, it doesn't matter, as the number 10 child because your child could be next. Your child could literally be next. So please, if you're just joining me, we're talking about back to school series, bullying and suicide. We just discussed 10, we just went through the names of nine children that I mentioned and the last child was your child because it could be your child. All those kids that died by suicide, their parents didn't think that they were gonna die either, but they were all bullied. And you know yourself, if your child has been bullied, you know yourself, if your child is a bully, and if your child is neither the bully nor the victim, then my friend, your child is the bystander. So please insert your child's name. Thank you very much. Um, so those are the 10 kids that we're gonna discuss, that we were gonna talk about today as far as children who have died by suicide in recent times. We're gonna now discuss what are the signs that your child is being bullied. So number one is your child comes home with unexplained injuries. Your child comes home losing their stuff, their book bag or their books or, you know, their favorite shoes. You know, some kids want to wear Air Jordan, whether they can afford it or not. This is why my kids don't wear Air Jordans, but apparently it's one of the things that kids want and they want to take it from you. So your child could be losing their shoes. Your child could present with change in mood or demeanor will change. Your child might start changing their behavior essentially. And if you're not present, if you're not mindful, you're gonna miss that your child's moods have changed. Your child might start somatizing, which is essentially presenting with bodily symptoms that do not really have a fundamental medical explanation. So your child is having headache and sore throat and leg pain and stomach pain and whatever, during the weekdays especially because they don't want to go to school. And of course, the next thing is school phobia. They also have sleep disorders. If your child who had no problem with sleep, problem, had no problems in the past with sleeping, suddenly starts having difficulty sleeping, having nightmares, start asking yourself those difficult questions. 
<laughs> your child's grades might start going down. Yes, absolutely. Your child's grades might start going down. That is a possibility that they're not able to focus in school because they're not able to focus in school. Their grades are suffering, right? Your child might also start avoiding activities that they normally like to do. I feel like I did this last week. Um, in school, they don't want to go to their school events. They don't want to hang out with their friends anymore, which is the next thing because maybe their friend has joined the gang of bullies, right? And then signs that your child is a bully is if their friends are always getting in trouble. If your child's friends are always getting in trouble, then my friend, your child is part of that group. And if your, your child's friends are bullies, then your child is invariably a bully. If your child gets in trouble all the time, and what if your child just refuses to accept any kind of responsibility for their activities? A lot of kids who are bullies don't ever want to accept any kind of blame, right? They just don't want to be careful about that kind of kid because you might be their next victim. A lot of kids bully their parents. That's a true statement, okay? A lot of kids worry that bullies also worry about their reputation, like because they are popular, like I said last week, right? So they don't want anything to tarnish their reputation. They want to be all that and two bags of chips, right? So be very, very careful if any of those symptoms are happening with your child. And so like I promised you last week, let's talk about why do kids not want to tell? Why do kids not want to seek any kind of help if they're being bullied? Why do they want to tell anybody? If they're watching me and you know the answer, take a jab at it. Why don't kids want to tell adults when they're being bullied? Well, it's really a no-brainer, right? What is the most likely thing to happen to a child who is someone that's telling? One of the things that people talk about is the title teller, something, snitches get stitches or something. One of those things that kids use, to, they run around those phrases because when you tell, you could be the next victim, right? So the onus is on you as a parent to instill in your child that mindset to always want to tell the truth, always want to be responsible, and always want to be his, his, or his, his brother or his sister's keeper, or her brother or her sister's keeper. Essentially, their brother's keeper. It's just good citizens of the world, of the earth, right? Like my friend Eric said today. So if your child is a good citizen of the world, of the planet, then your child is more likely, um, yes, exactly. Tonya, thank you. Tonya says that her son is watching with her. Tonya, thank you. And her son is saying that they, he, he will not, they will not speak because they may get hurt or they may be next. That's exactly what I'm saying. Thank you, Tonya. Give him a high five for me. Boom. Or the bullying, or the bullying of the victim will get worse. That is so, so true. Um, Tonya also says some parents may just say toughen up instead of getting involved. That is exactly right. And I was going to come to that next. Tonya, girl, high five to your son. Exactly. A lot of parents will say, dude, I can't believe you're, you're telling me that you're being bullied. My son or my daughter can never be bullied because I'm strong and I was so and so when I was younger and nobody dare bully me when I was young. And absolutely, one of the biggest reasons why children kill themselves, believe it or not, is lack of support from the home front. Lack of support from their parents. They're afraid that if they tell their parents, they're going to say, oh, toughen up. You bully them back or things like that. Forgetting that is a different world that we live in. And a lot of kids today are not dealing with what we dealt with. Our lifetime was easy, okay? They have so much to deal with now, I promise you. So again, like I say all the time, if your child even dares to tell you that they are being bullied or that they are hurting, you must believe them. Thank you so much, Tanya. That is so, so true. They also fear humiliation. A lot of the kids who don't want to tell, they don't want to feel like they're going to be humiliated because... They, many children who are victims, believe it or not, actually believe that it's their fault, that it's something that they're doing wrong. It's something that's wrong with them. And therefore, they believe that if they tell, that's even more humiliation, more shame on them. So many kids will not tell. And as a result, they will start hurting themselves. If you have a child who is cutting, if you have a child who suddenly starts going to their room when they come back from, from school, if you have a child who suddenly is withdrawing, please, please look into it. 
I don't ever want any of my people watching me to have a child who will go through this kind of thing. After all the times I've tried to tell you of all the signs and symptoms to look for. So yes, a lot of times they are more afraid of further humiliation, further bullying, parents not believing them, right? Yes, or even worse, becoming the new victim. They also, they have a fear of escalation, which is what um, Tanya's son said. They don't want the bullying to get worse, absolutely. A lot of children, actually, believe it or not, don't lack, they, now lack, they now lack any kind of trust of their parents. They don't trust their parents at all because their parents or the school system have failed them not once, not twice, multiple times. So a lot of kids would rather just not tell, right? Because it's like, what's the use? Nobody's going to do anything. But be very worried of that child who doesn't want to tell or that child who feels betrayed or that child who feels like they have been basically ostracized or denied any kind of help by the school system because they might very well be the one child who's going to come into the school, hashtag Columbine, and shoot up the school, right? So be very, very careful when your child tells you something like this and you're busy trying to say, I'm not going to believe because, oh, I'm a strong woman. Oh, my child is never going to do any wrong. Be very, very careful, okay? And then, of course, there's fear of ostracization. Yes, oh, you're the one that told, oh, did you know that so-and-so told? Oh, can you believe that so-and-so got so-and-so in trouble because they told? I didn't really bully them. I just barely touched them. It was just a joke. I was just playing. Who told you that? When my son was the victim of, essentially victim of bullying in the school bathroom recently, about seven or eight kids piled on top of him and he has asthma, don't you know what Mama Bird did? Oh, I think I told you guys about it already. Of course, you know what I did. That's my one number two. The kids chucked it up to, oh, they were just playing. As usual, oh, we were just playing. Yes, but my son has asthma. He was on a pile of six kids. He couldn't breathe. That's not a joke. You think my son told me? No. It was his friend that went and told. And your son Cole says what? Cole says some of the kids that are bullies are being mistreated at home and they become bullies to hide that emotion. Of course, that's exactly what we said last week, the characteristics of a bully. I like Cole. I think he should become a pediatrician, okay? Cole, thank you so much. Another high five. Absolutely. freaking lutely Most kids who have been hurt and have not been heard hurt other kids. So absolutely. Kids who have been bullied at home or even at school or at the YMCA or at the playground do become themselves bullies. Absolutely. And so, thank you, Cole. And so, what are the long-term effects of bullying? I mean, this is pretty straightforward. I mean, we've been talking about it for years now, right? For months, for weeks, for days. One of the worst long-term side effect of bullying is suicide in the victim. But did you know that even bullies too are at high risk of dying by suicide? Because a child who is a bully is really someone who is hurting, if you think about it. And what is one of the symptoms of depression? Hurting, right? And if you're hurting so much, you don't want to ask for help because you have all this shame going on, you act out by hurting other people, eventually one day it's gonna get the better of you. So a lot of bullies actually do end up dying by suicide. But the victims, we've talked about the fact that they'll have decreased performance in school grades, even the bullies themselves, they will have decreased performance in school grades, okay? The victims will have depression, anxiety, suicidal ideation, suicidal attempts, and of course, suicide, they can have multiple health complaints, like I said earlier, on somatization in the side of, in, on the side of the bully, I mean, on the side of the victim. The bully, they have a very high rate of drug abuse. Did you know that? Can someone please type that down for me? Bullies usually have a very, very high rate of substance abuse. Bullies, they have a very high rate of criminal activities and end up being incarcerated a lot. A lot of bullies end up in jail. A lot of bullies have a history of sexual promiscuity, sexual assault, domestic abuse, and of course, suicide. 
Whereas the victim tend to continue being a victim almost for life, even when it comes to domestic abuse. The victims can also continue being victims, even to the point of um, domestic abuse in, in the marriage. And then what about the bystander? What about the bystander? Nobody talks about the bystander. Remember that your child could be the bystander, okay? Your child could be the bystander. So Ellie says, bullies have a high rate of, yes, they have a high rate of substance abuse, absolutely. But what about the bystander? Believe it or not, one of the things that is very, very common with bystanders is school absence, right? Truancy, yes, missing of school. I wonder why. Believe it or not, even the bystanders have a, have a, they have a heart, okay? And if they can't help your child, a lot of times they want to avoid the situation. The good ones that still have a conscience. But one of the things they might do is avoid going to school because the bully is there. They don't want to be seen, they don't want to be seen as not following or not supporting the bully. So a lot of times the bystanders have a high rate of school truancy, of missing school. The bystanders also have a high rate of emotional issues. And why would they not? Why would they not? I mean, if you have to sit there and watch somebody getting beat up all the time, is that a word, beat up, beaten up all the time? If you have to sit there and just watch them all the time and you know you want to cry for help but you can't cry for help because you're afraid for your own life or for your own self, of course, there's a very, very high rate of emotional distress. And when emotional distress or emotional issues are present, what comes next? Drugs and alcohol, absolutely. Smoking cigarettes abusing drugs, very, very common in the bystander. So this is funny because this brings me back to kind of full circle, right? So in other words, whether your child is a victim or the bully or the bystander, they are at high risk of issues happening. So no wonder these things are so common, right? No wonder these things are so common. If you're just joining me, we're talking about bullying, and suicide, back to school series, talking about the consequences of bullying, long-term consequences. And Tonya's son is doing so well. Tonya, can you ask your son if you can think of any more consequences? This is so cool that you're having your son watch this. Thank you, thank you so much. And so I'm gonna do a special segment here. This special segment is called Bullying and ACEs. Do anyone, does anyone watching me know what ACEs, what the acronym ACEs is? I'm gonna drink my water in the meantime. So ACEs means it's A-C-E-S. ACEs stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences, okay? Adverse Childhood experiences and bullying is one of them can someone please type aces for me and bullying indeed is one of those adverse childhood experiences so essentially what they're saying is it's experiences that children go through as children that when they get older it it kind of forms impacts their life impacts their life and kind of determines who they become in one way or the other. As you all know, I was bullied when I was in elementary school and that kind of gave me the impetus to, oh, Tonya's son is saying something, hold on. Oh my God, a lot too. Okay, let me see. So she says, sometimes teachers get fed up with the same child telling on others and they turn a blind eye, but sometimes there are only certain bystanders willing to speak up. Wow, what a kid. Tanya, I'm assuming that's from Cole, right? Thank you so much, Cole. That's, that's a child's perspective. You know what, Tanya? I have a great idea. I'm going to run it by you after I said this, okay? I'm going to ask you a, a favor because I think I need Cole to, to do something for me. This is so good. Tanya, thank you so much. So, so Cole, her son, who is in school, is telling us that sometimes, I never thought about this. You can't read this up in a book, okay? She says that, Cole says that sometimes the teachers get tired of someone, I guess a bystander or someone who wants to tell, who wants to help, always telling, and now they start turning a blind eye. I love that. But 
tell Cole that I'm saying at that point, that is when the child takes it to the home front, right? And we're hoping and praying and assuming that at home, their parents are also um, looking and their parents are also agreeing, right? And helping to fight this bullying thing that's going on. But that is so good. Wow. Thank you so much, Cole. So, so, so good. So that is it, you know, from a child's mouth. The fact that even sometimes the teachers start turning a blind eye, you know, they start turning a blind eye, even though they've been watching the child and because the child has been telling on them a lot. Say so he comes from a mama. <laughs> yes, he comes to mama bear. That is so true. And thank you so much, Cole. If you're just joining me, we're talking about back to school series and bullying and suicide today. So we're going to discuss ACEs. So ACEs essentially is adverse childhood experiences which end up affecting the child when they become adults, okay? And I promise you the fan is on, but for some reason, I guess I'm having hot flashes. Oh my goodness, menopause in the house. I love it. All right, so one of the things that um, ACEs causes is high risk of suicide especially after the child has been bullied. And as a Nigerian, I'm going to have to throw it in there. You parents that live in America, you don't know what Nigerian kids go through. Some of the Nigerian kids, they get beat up so much that they, they leave scars on their body. Parents, teachers, they get whooped. It is terrible because they still believe that it takes, whereas I do believe that it takes a village to raise a child, the parents tell the teachers to beat the kids for them and they get beaten up and it's so, so bad. That is, that is very, very adverse as, as I'm concerned. And now we're seeing a lot more suicide in Nigerian children and young adults and we're wondering why. Well, maybe it's all of that, all of that bullying that's been going on when they were younger in the form of ACEs. Also, um, you have a high risk of suicide in victims of bullying when there's decreased parental involvement we already talked about that when there's increased trauma when there's a history of trauma other kinds of trauma for instance imagine a child whose parents may be a poor or who lives in the projects or live or is homeless you know let's just pick a homeless child who is homeless and goes to school with dirty clothes or something and gets picked on and gets bullied because of the dirty clothes that they can't help and then on the so in the school on the school front they are being bullied because they have dirty clothes. On the home front, they're not necessarily being bullied, but it's an adverse experience because they're they are homeless and they, are, they, are, they live under a bridge or something, which is really, really stressful, right, to the child. So what I'm saying is we have to be very, very careful when you bully someone and then you hear that the kid ends up dying by suicide. You don't know what else they're dealing with at home. So don't assume that, oh, well, we all got bullied and we all did okay. Everyone is not walking the same distance everyone is not walking on the same road so it is very very possible that a child can get bullied at school and then when they get home they're being beaten up at school because i mean at home because they got bullied at school i mean any combination you name it is a possibility for that one little child if that child happens to be maybe the last born and maybe they are, the older siblings want to beat them up i mean there's so many combination of bad things that can happen okay then, of course, we already talked about the fact that LGBTQ kids in Nigeria and even adults in Nigeria, because Nigeria is still one of those countries where they believe that you can pray everything away. They're always asking for divine intervention, yet they're all overall mean, you know? You're all calling God, 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 God. Every street has a church. Everybody has their own church. Yet, they're not even able to recognize the fact that a child who was born LGBT is a child who was born LGBT. Oh no, in Nigeria, they want to beat the LGBT out of you. They want to take you to be prayed on. Prayed in two words, right? Is that a homonym or a synonym, whatever? P-R-A-Y, they want to pray for you. And when you leave them to be prayed on, P-R-A-Y, what does the pastor do? Prays on the child sexually. It is such a bad, toxic environment. And yet, they call God, you know? So, yes, LGBTQ in Nigeria specifically is such a deadly thing. It's bad enough in America because, as you all know, all the transgender kids are getting killed left, right, and center. But it's so bad in Nigeria because these kids have nowhere to go. Imagine if you're LGBT and you're in Nigeria and you're going to get, oh, when you get older, guess what? You get 14 years in prison because you're, you're gay. 
I am done with this country that preaches the Bible all the time, or they toss the Quran at you, that they're all religious, and they don't recognize that their child is hurting. You know, because, oh, wait, I'm worried about your soul. Why don't you worry about your own soul that is not going to go to heaven, by the way, based on your actions? You know, don't let me go to church, please. Anyway, so that's, <laughs> that's that. And then I mentioned that one of the other things that at least is not good in America is how they prey on the Jews, they prey on the Muslims, they prey on the immigrants. All of these things are adverse experiences for the child. Imagine if your child just happened to be a child that was born on the flip side of the border, right? South of the border, Mexico, and your parents go Honduras or Guatemala, wherever, and your parents decide to take that trek to America. And then they make it and they finally maybe get a job and start living. And then all you see every day is from the president all the way to your next door neighbor, all the way to your, the kid in school. It's talking about how immigrants are the rapists. Immigrants are the people bringing drugs. Immigrants are the ones that are doing all the bad things. Oh, and recently there was this big news flash about Nigerians, 80 Nigerians who involved themselves in scheme. You know what I say? If you allow yourself to be a victim of a scam like that, you deserve it. You deserve it. Because there's no reason why you should be all up in here in America and believing that somebody in Nigeria loves you. Are you crazy? Have you lost your mind? You deserve it. Victims of romantic scams. Are there not enough men here or women here? What do you mean you don't know the person they tell you that they love you, send them money, and then you send them the money. Then you deserve to lose your money. Okay? Yeah. I'm going to be Nigerian for that. I have no problem saying that. But just imagine if you were a Nigerian on the flip side, and everybody says all the immigrants are the bad people. All the immigrants are the bad people. I can't tell you how many children are now going through such a stressful life because they're preying on immigrants, innocent people, in a country that was made up of immigrants in the first place. Oh my God, please, somebody stop me. Anyway, I wanted to just talk about childhood, adverse childhood experiences as one of the things that can exacerbate the ultimate outcome of a child. The fact that the child could be bullied, the child could be raped, the child could be molested, the child could be abused at home physically, emotionally, verbally. The child could be going through all of these things and then you add to it a teacher who maybe does not allow, you know, does not allow them to report them anymore because, oh, they're tired of being reported. You know, just any kind of bad combination this poor little child can be going through. So when your child comes to you, if your child comes to you and says, mom, dad, I'm being bullied, please, please believe them. And please, please don't ever drop the ball when it comes to being your child's advocate. Okay? So... That is all I have for y'all today. If you join me today, thank you so much, Tiffany, Yasika, Alice, Free, Samantha, M Marty Fail. Hi, Marty, my patient. Ucha Nabangs. Hey, my name's Kim Sweet. Hi, Kim. Anjali Pundir, Chinyan Obina, Elise, on the other hand, Kevin Wilson, Eleanor Gray, Jasmine Davis, Buck Parker, a lot of people. So many people join me today. Thank you all so much. And you know what? Please, please share this video. Next week, I'm going to have a, a different way. You're welcome, Tanya. Next week, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm having a guest. Is it next week? Yeah. I'm having a guest join us, and we're going to talk a little bit more about bullying. She's actually like somewhat of a bullying expert. So we're going to have her join us tomorrow for the Facebook Live. It's going to be one of my first episodes that I'm going to be doing as um, with um, a guest. I think I've done one before. This is going to be only my second one with a guest. So I may not be able to broadcast it live on all three platforms. So we may just do it on my page or we'll just pick a page, maybe ask the Tolulu page. I'm just going to ask all of you guys to meet us there. But um, it's going to happen, okay? It's going to happen next week. So other than that, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead. Hug your kids. Hug your kids. Remember, parenting is hard. It is the hardest thing that I've ever done. It is the hardest thing that you've ever done, including Mama Bear. Tanya, I love you, but it is also the best thing you could have ever done. So be proud of yourself. Pat yourself on the back and say to yourself, you got this, okay? Bye. I'll see y'all later. <laughs>
I love you, baby girl. Bye. Mind. Okay. Oh, Alice, thank you so much. Get on that line. I'm kidding. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye, Alice.